The following video is a tutorial for the service and maintenance of hammerhead mole bolted piercing tools with the power port reverse feature. This training will cover the disassembly, inspection, and replacement of all internal parts and the body. This tutorial does not cover the service and maintenance of the head assembly. For information specific to your head assembly, please refer to the service video dedicated to your model. Before servicing your piercing tool, identify the tool model and the reverse mechanism. Bolted power port tools reverse with a quarter turn of the rear whip hose and have four or more bolts on the back of the tool. Inspect the exterior of the tool body. Check for cracks, severe wear, and damage from utility strikes. Replace the body assembly when necessary, as damage could lead to future failure. Inspect the whip hose for rips or tears. Check the tail bolt heads for wear. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool and the striker should float freely from one end to another. Secure the piercing tool using either a pipe stand or a chain wrench. Remove the external whip hose. To remove the rear assembly, start by loosening the tail bolts, approximately two rotations each, and unscrew the rear assembly from the body. Remove and clean the rear assembly. And finally, slide out the striker. Be careful not to damage the internal body threads upon removal. There are three major components to all hammerhead mole piercing tools. The body assembly, striker, and rear assembly. Inspect the tool body for debris. Catamount tools contain an air tube inside at the front of the body. Inspect the tube. It should be straight and centered within the head assembly. A catamount tool can be identified by determining if there are spanner wrench slots near the head assembly. Clean the interior of the tool body by brushing or swabbing. Do not brush or swab the interior of a catamount tool without removal of the head assembly. To clean a catamount body, use a low-pressure solvent and an air hose. Inspect the body for broken or damaged threads. Repair with an internal thread file if necessary. Bodies containing broken threads should always be replaced. The serial number of the piercing tool is located on the back end of the tool body, shown here. Remove the rings off the striker and inspect and clean the ring grooves with a wire brush or wire wheel. Do not grind, polish, or sand the striker. Inspect the ring grooves. The grooves must be square. Worn ring grooves may cause poor performance and the striker should be replaced. Inspect the length of the striker body for cracks, fractures, or any other external damage. Cracked or fractured strikers must be replaced. Perform an internal inspection of the striker bore for debris. Brush and swab as necessary. The catamount striker has a port in the front that lines up with an interior air tube. Inspect the port for debris and clean as necessary. Clean the striker rings and install on the striker. Check the striker rings for wear with a straight edge. The rings should stand proud of the ring groove. Shown here is a ring in need of replacement. Notice the gap between the straight edge and the ring. Polished striker surfaces may indicate the tool has been run with worn rings, which may slightly hinder tool performance. Check the ring gaps with two U.S. quarters. Consult the operator's manual for exact ring gap specifications. Trim the rings if necessary. 
Before reinstalling the striker, lubricate the tool body, striker rings, and the striker port on catamount strikers. Install the striker into the body. When reinstalling the striker on catamount models, be careful not to damage the air tube at the front of the body. Slowly install the striker, and if necessary, rotate the striker to help line up the air tube with the striker port. After installation, visually confirm the air tube is properly aligned with the striker. The rear assembly contains 10 components. The control stem, valve, tail bolts, rear anvil, control sleeve, isolator halves, valve rings, rear whip hose, tail cone, and control stud. Before disassembling the rear assembly, perform a general inspection. Inspect the rear assembly and clear any debris or blockage. The rings on a power port valve should stand proud when centering the rings by hand. Rings must be replaced when side-to-side -side movement is apparent or the ring does not stand proud of the valve. Check to see if the control stud is at the bottom of the detent slot. Disassembly is required to further inspect the control stem and control sleeve. This valve displays acceptable wear. This valve needs immediate replacement. Inspect the control sleeve. The sleeve must be translucent and free of rips or tears. Any solid colored sleeves must be replaced. The control sleeve should act as a spring. Measure the length of the compressed valve assembly from the base of the anvil to the top of the valve. The control stem should be replaced if its length is more than plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch from the manufacturer's specification. Inspect the tail bolts for wear. Rounded tail bolts should be replaced. Remove the control stud with the socket provided with your piercing tool. Remove the valve and the control sleeve from the control stem. Remove the tail bolts. Inspect the tail bolt head and threads for damage. If one or more tail bolts are missing or damaged, replace the entire set. Remove the rear anvil and the tail cone. Inspect the tail cone for damage and debris. This is a damaged tail cone. Notice that the mating surface is not square. In addition, the tail cone has mushroomed from incorrect installation. Inspect the rear anvil. Use a thread file to repair any damaged threads. Rear anvils with broken threads should be replaced. Remove the isolator halves and inspect for rips and tears. Replace both halves if any damage is found. Inspect the control stud threads on the control stem. Examine the stops on the control stem. The edges should be square. Inspect the control stud's threads and head for wear. Replace if damaged. Again, examine the control sleeve for rips or tears. Replace if necessary. Remove the valve rings if replacement is needed. Prepare the new valve rings by stretching and warming the material. Place the rings onto the valve. Slide the provided hose clamp assembly over the valve ring and tighten. After at least two minutes, remove the hose clamp assembly and repeat on the other valve ring. Remove the hose clamps from the valve. Coat the isolator section of the control stem with anti-seize and install the isolator halves.
Brush the ID of the rear anvil with anti-seize. Insert the control stem and isolator into the rear anvil. Align the tailbolt and exhaust holes. Align the notch on the tail cone and the rear anvil and slide it into place. Dip the tailbolt threads in anti-seize and install through the tail cone and into the rear anvil. Do not tighten the tail bolts all the way. Slide the control sleeve into place, aligning the slots on the control sleeve with the notches on the rear anvil. Slide the valve onto the rear assembly, aligning the notches on the valve. The control stud threads must line up with the detent slot. Apply anti-seize to the control stud and install. Torque the control stud to manufacturer's specifications found in your operator's manual. Before installing the rear assembly, lubricate the valve rings and striker bore. Apply anti-seize to the rear anvil and the body threads. Install the rear assembly into the body. Check the operator's manual for rear assembly instructions. Some models require full installation of the rear anvil, while others require backing off the rear anvil up to an eighth of a turn. Tighten and torque the tail bolts in a star pattern according to the manufacturer's specifications located in the operator's manual. Finish the reassembly by tightening the rear whip hose with an open face wrench. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool. The striker should float freely from one end to another. Following a regular service schedule will keep your hammerhead mole piercing tools running at maximum efficiency.